It's all good aboard Aquarius. We are currently in the Seychelles and having a great time at all those beautiful beaches. But we had a fire aboard Aquarius. I wasn't sure I was going to do a video about the fire, but since I think it could help some sailors, let's do it. I've often said that fire is probably the only thing that could sink Aquarius. While in Thailand on the hard, the unthinkable happened. June 25th, 2021. The fire taught me several lessons and I hope this video helps at least one owner avoid a boat fire in the future. But what a mess that was. Having a fire on a boat is kind of scary. But uh, we'll get it all cleaned up today. And we'll have this boat back on the water in December. And everything should be okay. Cue the intro. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. So the fire started, or I found the fire, at 10 a.m. June 25th, 2021. I was on the hard at Krabby Boat Lagoon and I was getting ready for my flight, which was the next day, to head back to Las Vegas. I was plugged into shore power and I had three things running. A dehumidifier, the air conditioner in the back room, and a battery charger charging at 60 amps. So total from the shore power was about three kilowatts which shouldn't have been a problem, but I smelled smoke. And so I started to search for it. I opened up this cabinet here and the smoke, there was smoke in here, but it wasn't that bad. So then I went outside and I opened up the engine room. And there was so much smoke that came out of the engine room, I couldn't breathe. I had to get out and I went back downstairs and I grabbed the fire extinguisher. I went back upstairs and it was just too much smoke. I had to get off the, the boat. So I went out and I was on the hard. So we had a ladder over here I went downstairs and I unplugged the boat. I was down those stairs really fast, so, and then I was back up. And by that time, the smoke had cleared a little bit and I was able to get the fire extinguisher and I just put it underneath and shot it towards wh where I thought the fire was. And then the smoke got a little bit less and I was able to go down and put out the rest of the fire and I saw that there was there was a, a, a bit of damage. The biggest lesson learned, you can't do anything with a fire extinguisher unless you can get close to the fire. You can't get close to a fire unless you can breathe and get there. And that's why I bought a couple of these. These are masks and they're easy to put on. Uh, I've got one for Javilla and one for me. And with those masks, we would be able to fight the fire or uh, make it easier for us to escape a fire if there was so much smoke. Because I'll tell you, it scares the hell out of you when you can't get to the fire. You know the fire's there. You want to get to it, but you can't because you're just so sick from that smoke. Just one breath of that smoke made me sick for the rest of the day. So get yourself a couple of those masks so that you can actually use that fire extinguisher when you need it. 
Take a look at the AC power connections on Aquarius. In the engine room, there was an AC junction box, at least before the fire. This box was for all the AC power on Aquarius. There are two shore power plugs, one to plug into 110 and the other to plug into 220. Now almost everywhere around the world, marinas supply 220 volts, but in the United States and a few other places, they supply 110 volts. Since all the AC electronics on board Aquarius run off 220 volts, the previous owner had a 110 to 220 volt transformer installed because he planned to sail Aquarius around the world. The box where the fire started was where you could choose between 220 volts from the transformer if the marina supplied 110 volts or you could plug directly into 220 volts from the marina power. This path also had an auto switch when using the genset, which of course is also 220 volts. On the day of the fire, I was plugged into 220 volts direct from shore power. In fact, I've never used the 110 to 220 volt transformer in the five years I've been sailing Aquarius. In May 2020, an electrician did some work on Aquarius at Phuket Yacht Haven. Let me just tell you, never hire any electrical contractor that has no background in electronics and or not qualified electricians. I made this mistake and hired an American dude at Yacht Haven Marina. The fire started here and this wire here was one of the lines that the contractor in Yacht Haven Marina installed just about a year before. I thought the fire started because the electrical contractor didn't install a high enough gauge wire, which was also true, but my friend Hans, the owner of another Super Maramu 2000 called PEM, told me it probably wasn't the cause. He said it usually starts because of a bad connection, one that is not properly tightened. And sure enough, when I pulled everything apart, it was the connection of the wire to the female plug inside the junction box. That is where the fire started and that is where all the three kilowatts of shore power entered Aquarius. This wire should have been sized to handle the max, which was at least six kilowatts just for the genset and should have been sized to 10 kilowatts to handle everything on board Aquarius three AC units, a 120 amp charger, washing machine, water heater, etc. This could easily get up to 10 kilowatts and in the salon Aquarius is fused to 10 kilowatts. Here's a diagram of how I would like to change the AC power connections on Aquarius. I will have a trusted shore power input and an untrusted shore power input. For untrusted shore power, including 110 volts at 60 hertz, I would use the untrusted shore power plug. It will have a 5 kilowatt breaker and connect to a battery charger like this one. This charger accepts almost any kind of power, AC or DC, and the frequency just doesn't matter. It's also completely isolated, which is very nice for a boat plugged in at a marina. In this case, I would run everything off inverters. In the future, I could add additional inverters to handle more power if required. Aquarius is currently limited to about 3 kilowatts. If the shore power is clean, 220 volts at 50 hertz, I would plug directly into shore power. If you agree or have a better option, leave it in the comments below. Could have been much worse, but it's a disaster right now. You can see the burnt stuff over there. My oh my, not good. Yep, pump is leaking. I don't know if you can see it. That pump is gonna have to be replaced. Might be able to get that pump replaced today. And then I'll just have to get a spare when I'm back in the States. Need to get 
a replacement for that. They've already started the cleaning process. The particular connector that burnt. We're gonna pull that apart. We're gonna take a look at it, even though I don't have time to do this. I think it's important that I have it on video exactly what happened that caused the fire. Well, this wire looks fairly undersized. Take a look at this photo. A Mel's wire versus the dude's wire. We still need to know a bit more about this wire because I'd really like to know the current rating. Uh, what else does that say? Say like Ten Max SR. Three G two point five millimeter. Teneflex SR three G two point five millimeter. A quick look up on the web and voila. So it does look like it's underrated, but not as much as I had thought. It's actually rated for thirty amps and Aquarius would never see more than thirty amps or six point six kilowatts on the hard. I might get to 5 kilowatts, but no more. Really, the only place I could get to more than 6 kilowatts was in a marina with all the ACs running, the water heater, the washing machine, and maybe a toaster all at the same time. So what happened? Please give your opinion down below in the comments. But here's my opinion. Connectors always have a current rating, and this connector was probably rated well over 10 kilowatts. But I am sure this also had a wire size rating as well, and I believe it would be very difficult to get a good connection with a wire that was too small for the connector. Bad connection per Hans on PIM, and he knows, is where fires start. Of course, we're going to review all the comments below because there may be someone that knows a lot more about this subject than I do, but I think we've got it figured out. Now, let's get cleaned up and talk about fire safety. Testing, testing, testing. Uh-oh, what's wrong with your face? Okay, so if there's a fire on board, sometimes you have to make sure that you can put things out and you, you can't see them. So come down here. This is the DC levers. Put the negative off first, then the positive. Up here, you've got the fuel shutoff valve for the, the engine and all the, the diesel. It's right here. Pull that one. Then make sure you go over to your AC panel. Shut off everything on the AC, so we'll just shut them all off. Make sure everything's off on the AC panel. Open this up, and this one here, that's your main shut off. This light here now should be off. You shouldn't be screaming. And you're all done. Now, you wanna go over. and grab the fire extinguisher. And now you're ready to go. And the only other thing that you should know where, where things are is, right now it's on the table. But you should know where your masks are too. First, have a fire procedure written down and drill your procedures. If your boat has several areas where a fire could start, have a plan for each area. In Aquarius, we have several areas where a fire could start. The engine room, the forward cabin due to the bow thruster, the galley, and the battery compartment. We could also have a deck fire with the dinghy gas stored on the starboard deck near the stern. Again, write down a procedure and drill that procedure. It's no good to have good equipment on your boat and the crew not knowing how to use it. So drill. 
Know your batteries and how to put out a battery fire if one starts. We have lithium iron phosphate batteries and my plan is easy. Shut everything down. Grab a fire mask and a fire extinguisher. Hit it with the CO2 fire extinguisher, then flood it with water. With new people on your boat, drill the fire procedures, just like before takeoff on every commercial flight. It's good to know where all the fuel and power switches are and practice shutting them down blindfolded. Here are some things you might want to consider having on your boat. Firefighting headgear, one like this, we have two aboard. Fire blankets in every room. And maybe one like this if you have a crew member that is burned, so that crew member might sustain just a bit less fire damage. Fire extinguishers in every room. Auto fire extinguisher in the engine room. Thermal image device, more on this later. And if there's anything else that you think that we should have to fight fires on a sailboat or prevention, put it in the comments below. Every two years or so, get out your thermal imaging device and check all your electrical connections. Make sure all the electrical connections are tight and clean. Large ships do this every year. Years you would take you would take this off and you would check the temperatures of all your connections, your AC connections. It's an easy, easy thing to do. It only takes a few minutes to get that off, but you can take a look at all your 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 connections. Your main AC shut down right here. You know. This is that uh, wire that uh, at some point we're gonna have to replace if we wanna use 10 kilowatts. So these wires here will have to be replaced. Just make sure all these connections are tight, screwed down, no loose connections, no, no abnormal temperatures on any of these connections when you have them all turned on and running and uh, you're good to go. So we also need to go through these switches as well, make sure all the connections are good on this box as well. But uh, that should be about it. Also make sure that your boat is clean. It's tough to fight a fire or find a hole in a messy boat. In the engine room, make sure there's no oil puddles or fuel leaks. The day before the fire, the humidifier was not running properly. This was a hint that there was something going wrong with the power. Motors like clean frequencies and bad connections will make the motors run hard. If your ACs or dehumidifier or anything else connected to your power system is not running properly, investigate. This could save your boat. Fair winds. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those.